السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على رسوله الأنبياء والمرسلين بسم الله My brothers and sisters Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is in full control of everything that happens in this world in numerous places in the Quran, Allah says, "Inna Allaha ala kulli shayin qadir." That indeed Allah over everything is capable. So much so that Allah says in the Quran, "Inna ma amruhu ida arada shay'a," that all it takes when He wills for something to be. أَنْ يَقُولَ لَهُ كُمْ فَيَقُونَ is for him to say be and it is and within moments Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can either give you health or take away health give you wealth or take away wealth and it may be that something becomes apparent about you some news comes out and within moments all your honour and status is taken away and I want you to keep this power and might of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in your mind whilst I speak about Hajj the experience of performing Hajj from the West has always been an incredibly privileged experience your hotel in Mecca is so close to the masjid that sometimes in some hotels you come down in the lift and you are in the courtyard of the masjid itself. When you go to Mina, your tents are so close to the jamarat that you can see them. When you go to Arafat, you have a private tent with air conditioning in it. And when you go to Muzdalifah, there is an enclosed area where whilst everyone sleeps on a rock or on the floor, your company would provide you with a thin foam mattress so that you can sleep comfortably. Even before you go for Hajj, as long as you apply early enough and you can afford to go, you can go. There may be other things in your life that become obstacles and make it difficult for you to go or give you reasons why you may not go. As a general rule, if you wanted to go and you could afford it, you could go. And that is a privilege that we have enjoyed for a very long time. But every now and then there are things that happen. There are things that happen to serve us, to teach us humility that bring us down back to earth. They show us the limit to our entitlement that we have because of our passport or because of the company that we've gone with when we're performing Hajj. And we forget that this ease and this privilege that we've got is not because we came from the West or that we are in the West but rather it is something that is given to us by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Except now it is in the process of being taken away. The ministry of Hajj has brought in many changes and as far as I know those changes affect this year as well. You will not be able to go with any Hajj company. Even the guarantee of whether you will get a chance to go or not has been taken away. The process now is that you go onto a single website where you fill in an application form to submit your name and that name joins a pool of thousands of other names from Europe, North America and Australia. At the moment, the website doesn't even let you fill out an application form. It just lets you put in uh, a registration of interest 
even for this year. And if your name does not come up in that lottery, because the ministry then chooses in a lottery out of all the names that have been submitted, if your name does not come up, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not invite you to come for Hajj this year, then there is absolutely nothing that you can do on this planet to go. So much so that previously, even where we know that the rule is that you cannot go within five years of performing Hajj, if you could pay for it, you had an exception. And that is no longer there. It does not matter what passport you owned, what country that you were coming from, or what company you were going to be going with. You will now be part of everyone else, where you the dream of performing your Hajj depends on a lottery, like the rest of the world. Now I don't deny this, and I fully accept that this is an incredibly stressful experience for all of the people who were planning and intending to go for Hajj this year. There are many who have already given the deposits to the companies, and there may be those who don't manage to get their money back. And as terrible as it may sound, and as terrible as it may be, and we don't know this because we don't know the package that the ministry will offer, what flights, accommodation and how much it will cost. But I will admit, when I heard of this, I was quite distraught because that control and that luxury that we had had been taken away. In all of this, there is something really profound for us to realize. And that is the power and might of Allah. That is what I started with in this speech. Nobody in the recent times would have imagined that just in the space of a day, there would be such a significant change that would affect people's ability to go for Hajj this year and in the future. The people of Ad, they thought that they were safe because of the strength and the grandeurs that Allah had given them. The people of Samud, they thought that they were safe because of the houses that they had built for themselves inside mountains. I thought we were safe in our ability to go for Hajj from the West whenever we wanted, however we wanted and with whatever luxury we wanted to go. But Allah has taken that away. And although that has been taken away, there are numerous other things that we have been blessed with whilst we live here in the West. That we sometimes need to sit, think and reflect upon to identify that those are things that we have been blessed with. And that we should be grateful for those. Allah says in the Quran, Awalam Yasiru fil ard. Have they not travelled through the earth? And observed how was the end of the people before them. In another place, Allah says, Afalam Yasiru fil ard. Do they not then travel through the earth? فَتَكُونَ لَهُمْ قُلُوبٌ يَعْقِلُونَ بِهَا So that their minds can gain wisdom. أَوْ آذَانٌ يَسْمَعُونَ بِهَا And so that their ears can thus learn to hear. And in this encouragement, when we travel, there is an encouragement to observe. And one of the things that you observe when you travel through the lands and the earth is the ease, the luxury, the privilege and the ni'mah that Allah has given us over here. <coughs> At home, when you open a tap, there is water that comes in it. You did not have to fill out an application form for a water tanker to come to your house, to fill a tank at your house. And then for you to go outside and turn the motor on so that the water can go from the tank that is downstairs to the tank that is upstairs for you to then have water. When you turn the shower on, very quickly the water is hot. 
You did not have to turn on a stove, boil a pot of water, mix it with other water so that you can wash yourself. And as you can tell, hot water is important to me. A couple of weeks ago, I was in a North African country and it was hot and the hotel had no AC. And it was, it was my mistake for not checking properly, but it was hot and we struggled. And there was nothing that I could do about it. And it is this realization of what we have that is important. And it is only when you know and when you realize what you have is that when you can be grateful for it. And it is this gratitude that is important, both general gratitude to Allah and for specific things. And for those who are affected by the changes, there isn't a huge lot that I can say, to be honest. Apart from it is a time to be patient. Allah says in the Quran, وَعَسَىٰ أَن تَكْرَهُوا شَيْئًا Perhaps you dislike something. وَهُوَ خَيْرٌ لَكُمْ And it may be that it is good for you. I will end with what the Prophet ﷺ told his companion Mu'ad to say at the end of every salah, which is the dua that we know. Allahumma a'inni ala dhikrik wa shukrik wa husna ibadatik. Which is, O oh Allah, help me to remember you. So we ask Allah to even help us to remember him. So, O oh Allah, help me to remember you, to thank you, and to worship you well. أقول قول هذا وأستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروا إنه هو الغفور الرحيم.